Starting off with Artificer Tribal here in Modern. This is a speculative brew from uh, stream contributor and all-around awesome human being, Horny Vegan. It's their screen name. So they have sent me a Artificer Tribal deck taking advantage of new pod Pyre of Heroes. So Pyre of Heroes is a two-mana artifact that says two-mana tap, sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type with a sacrifice creature and has converted mana cost equal to one plus that creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield and uh, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only anytime you could activate a sorcery. Cast a sorcery. So uh, Goblin Engineer, Stoneforge Mystic are both artificers. So they can be turned into Blade Splicer, Psy, or Dalakos Crafter of Wonders. And these can be turned into Urza Lord High Artificer. Uh, we also have Karn in here. We have a, a small bevy of artifacts, including uh, Talisman of Progress, Talisman, Talisman of Creativity to launch us up the chain to Urza. We've got a Batter Skull in here for our Stoneforge Mystics to fetch, as well as the Sword of the Meek. We do have uh, three Thopter Foundries, as well as Urza, as well as the uh, Sword of the Meek to go infinite. And we've got all manner of artifact shenaniganery that we can get with Goblin Engineer. So uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways this deck could win. We also have Karn the Great Creator to wish out of our sideboard. Uh, the, the major quote-unquote change that I made to this deck list is I squeezed in an Aether Sworn Canonist into the main deck and the sideboard as a hedge against the brutality that is the uh, Tybalt's Trickery decks. Uh, generally speaking, the way this deck has been built is not going to be particularly effective against that. We have four of Chalice of the Void in our main deck, which I think is possibly worse than ever right now in the metagame, but um, we're going to go ahead and just try it out and see what happens. Um, I think we're going to very quickly learn that it is not a good idea. And potentially, we need more um, more effects along the med line of Meddling Mage and Aether Sworn Canis to deal with the truly grotesque number of um, uh, Tybalt's Trickery decks that are, have been around. Um, that said, we have Boil for the All Island version, um, as well as some main deck hate in the form of Damping Sphere and Trinisphere. Uh, sorry, I took out the Damping Sphere for the Aether Sworn Canis. We do still have a Trinisphere available. So these cards do work fairly effectively against against that deck. So that's going to be our general strategy uh, if and when we run into that. So without further ado, let's Meanwhile. get a little bit of a league of modern here with Artificer Pod and Rock and Riggedy Roll. I did play a League of Delver today. Uh, I was on 2-0, then I had a very, very tight 1-2, uh, and then we got absolutely stomped in round 4 by a uh, mono-white um, Emiria the Sky Ruin deck. Um, and uh, we had a very close loss to uh, Mono Red Prowess. And uh, then in the final round, we beat a very salty trickery player. So I played against two different trickery decks, but they were two different trickery decks. I played against a sort of uh, all-in on red-green uh, Tybalt's trickery deck, and then I played against uh, trophy leader Pai Gonti, who was playing the new Esper uh, Tybalt's trickery deck, which is playing Brazen Borrowers, Bone Crusher Giants, and some number of um, Supreme Verdict. Okay, we're on the play. We can name Artist Fisser on our cavern. We've got a pyre. We've got, I mean, I think this is basically the ideal hand other than this gemstone caverns. Um, so good luck, Godspeed, little deck. Do I scare my opponent? I think I'm going to scare my opponent. I'm the trickery deck, but I kept a seven. Arr. Gemstone caverns. Arr. Now they're going to be on the trickery deck and they're just going to eat me alive, but such is life. All right, um, let's go Artificer. Uh, I want to play Goblin Engineer and fetch something. 
Because if I draw a land next turn, I could play the Icker Wellspring and then fetch out my something. But Arid Mesa doesn't give me anything to go on. So instead of that, I'm actually going to play Stoneforge Mystic and just grab my Batter Skull. The Batter Skull. There's a very good chance my opponent just has, like, removal, but uh, that's fine. Do you want to use Stoneforge Mystic's ability? Yes, yes, I would like to use Stoneforge Mystic's ability. Are you sure? Thought I'd ask. Just, just thought maybe there was an opposition agent in play. Mmm, coffee. Is this good old mom and pop? Oh, it's Scred Red. Nope, Red Prison. Well, flip me sideways. Uh, that's a great pickup. Let's see if we can hit land first. No, let's play that now. A woohoo! Grand potato to play. A woohoo! Green to potato to throw. A woohoo! Tin to potato to melt. All right. Opponent is uh, Relic Flooded. Yikes. Not the best draw in our deck. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll play Icar Wellspring first. And then we're probably playing Goblin Engineer here. Yeah. I guess I could play Pyre, and then next turn if I draw land, I could play a two drop, and then nah, I'm just gonna play the Goblin Engineer. I know they have a Relic, so I'm just not gonna, yeah. So play the Engineer, and then next turn if I draw a land, I can uh, Turn the engineer into a uh, Psy or Blade Splicer or something. Alpen Meadow, eh? Yikes! That could be problematic. And they plussed it. But they hit a bolt. Some people out there are probably asking, why didn't you play the Stoneforge Mystic? Why didn't you consider playing the Blade Splicer? The answer is because that's not an option. Just got to play the Pyre naked here. It's literally the only spell I can cast in this hand. In theory, we should... Oh, no. Six drop Chandra. That's a real threat. Oh, Glory Banger. Oh, that's just about as bad. Sure. Yeah, got him. Sure. Well, it's untapped at least. So I can play Psy and Chandra could just eat it, but at least we're forcing some action out of them. Stream title is finally correct. I played Urza literally yesterday. I literally played Urza yesterday. Yesterday I played Urza. Why are you always on my ass with this? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Chop bust away, my friend. Chop bust away. Bust my chops. Just wide open. Bleeding. Everything. Uh, so we're super duper dead. Feels like we're dead. I could play this chalice on too. That seems appealing. 
chat so smarmy? I wouldn't call Larynx Punchworthy smart me. That uh, that just doesn't sound right. All right, put Chalice on one. Try to cut down on some bolts. All right, we're not cutting down on any bolts. Possibly eventually get to cut down on some screds. All right, well, we're going to three. Oh, no, we're going to dead. Well, thank goodness. Wait, this doesn't have haste? They're playing a dragon that doesn't have haste? What is wrong with you? For some reason, I assume this also had haste in addition to the other things it does. Because otherwise, what the hell, dude? Uh, we don't have a reasonable sideboard for this matchup, especially on the play, so let's go. Let's go, baby. Blood Moon, Force of Negation, um, and, uh, things like Meddling Mage and Aether Sword Cannabis are the cards that are on the big upswing right now, so... I thought we agreed to call opponent's deck Frostbite Red. I don't ever... Men re no, no, no. Scred Red has alliteration. Also, Frostbite, not a playable magic card. In most formats. So, no. No, I, I disagree with your take. It's not Frostbite Red until they start playing more Frostbites than they do Screds. Remember, Scred Red won a GP, all right? Don't you disrespect Scred. Don't you be disrespecting Scred Red. Because they will mess you up. I think it. All right, so we're going to go Plains, Island, um, Stoneforge, then Islet, maybe Goblin Engineer. OP with the main deck graveyard hate. Well, uh, I can try to prevent them from killing my stone. What if I responded by fetching again, opponent? Then what? Then what? What would you do? I guess you'd be in major. What's a GP? <laughs> hashtag, hashtag Zoomer facts. Are we winning? Uh, not yet. And I was supposed to play my uh, Chalice there. I got distracted by the uh, sarcasm. Then made bad decisions. Maybe they'll just abrade my Stoneforge and it would never matter anyway. Oh no! Oh, my fetch land. No. Sure. Never lucky. Good lord. Okay, I really should have played the Chalice. Got it. Wasn't expecting Scred Red to play so many gosh darn artifacts. Well, hopefully this stops something. A bread. Hmm. No proactive a braid, at least. Lant. Excellent. Artificial. Um, if we go Urza into Karn, that means my Karn can immediately get a two drop right now. And that two drop is liquid metal coating, most likely. It's probably worth it. On the flip side, if they have a um, Chandra Torture Defiance, they'll just pick off my Urza. So perhaps instead we will play Karn. Um, I think I will go plus him. Just plus him for nothing. Nice. 
didn't activate either of those. Okay, we're, we're definitely plusing. Because sh shutting off two relics is a big, big, uh, big deal. Metal coating into three balls, pretty gas. That it is, sir. That it is. If we draw a land, we'll be in good shape for that. But also, if they have Chandra Torch of Defiance, unless they have, like, a really good two-drop to play off of it, we can uh, um, Sorcerer Spyglass here while playing Goblin Engineer, so that seems good. Do -do -do -beep 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 -beep. Oh, sure. That's fine. I'll name human on this one in case I draw my um, Aether Sworn Canonist and I really want it to be uh, untargetable. All right. Uh... This deck is somehow not playing a Sky Sovereign, but I think it is playing a Academy Ruins. Is that correct? Nope. Why do we have a Mind Slaver? Interesting. Well, um, no Sky Sovereign's kind of kicking the teeth here. I can go... Urza into three ball bridge and engineer. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that line. Yeah, their relics are off right now, so maybe this engineer does get to do work. Could have gone Urza into bridge, sure. I kind of like this better, though, because this way, if they do have any, um, like, playable removal, that they'll blow it on things like bridge and etc. Although, getting them to kill the... Um... Oh, if I bury... Um, if I bury a Thopter Foundry this turn, if they can't deal with my board right now we win the game next turn. Because we go Wish for Sword of the Meek, play Urza, play Thopter Foundry. And uh, just take the game right there. So this is kind of neat, because they can't really see it coming, but it's all there. Yeah, that's that's fine. Oh, they plussed? Oh, that's excellent. I thought they would kill my Goblin Engineer. All right, opponent, you screwed up. I mean, I don't want to tell you uh, how to do your job over there, but uh, pretty sure you just died. All right. Uh, we need red, so let's go blue, blue. Urza's extra uncounterable. They couldn't see it coming. Well, <laughs> I did put the Thopter Foundry in my graveyard, so maybe they could. And we have a Chalice in play to block any bolts, so there's really just zero danger here. Play sword. Maximum efficiency will turn the sword. Uh, oops, sorry. Activate Goblin Engineer to bring back Thopter Foundry. Uh, we'll turn the sword into the Thopter Foundry. So before we do that, we'll go Urza taps this for one. Then we'll go this, activate this, bring back Thopter Foundry, sacking sword. And then I don't need the Incinerating Bridge anymore, so we'll just use uh, Thopter Foundry. Uh, sacrifice that. Oh, I had a mana floating, sure. Triggers. Woohoo! Yay! Good job, Artificer Pod deck. Now for game three. So I could bring in an extra gemstone caverns, but I don't think that that's what it's something I want to have here. Seems incredibly cute. I agree, Lord Michael. The lordy, lordliest of Michaels. Oh, Jiggy. 
you haven't answered my question on Discord yet, which was phrased specifically as Doctor Combo. Can you explain why frying things is God's cooking technique? Which really is uh, a question for Pastor Pastor Jiggy Wiggy. El Pastor de Combo. Uh, I think I'm keeping this one. I mean, it's not good, but like, turn two, Stoneforge, turn three. Fat equals flavor. Well, also, um, cooking with fat um, boils off water in a very efficient way that, that creates excellent, uh, excellent browning. Which I don't, I'm not, I know, I know it's uh, de defined as a Maillard reaction, but I don't actually have, um, I, I do have on food and cooking on my iPad, which I have been reading, but it does get a bit technical sometimes. If you haven't read it, Jiggy Wiggy, though, this is like the book. It's like the um, scientific explanation for most food things. You haven't read On Food and Cooking? All right, it's by um, it's by Harold McGee, and it was like the the sort of seminal '80s book. I have no equipment to get with a Stoneforge Mystic. No. Um, but he he made a big big uh, big splash in the in the cooking slash science world of actually analyzing cooking related issues with with a sort of scientific mind. <laughs> and he started off by being interested in why beans make people toot. Yeah, yeah, he's like the first true food scientist. That's uh that's about correct. Nice blood moon. I have a batter skull. All right. That's the turn. I don't have double blue, and if I play Cavern of Souls right now, I don't get to name a creature type, which is kind of unfortunate. So I don't love that. Please attack me. I mean, I guess it's worth making them use their mana if... Uh, no, we'll just take this. Yeah. And if they play, like, Chandra, Torture Defiance, we can drop in the Batter Skull. I think I'm just going to drop in Sword of the Meek here. Play like a coward. No, because then they just kill my Stoneforge while I'm tapped down. If they have the Abrade, they have the Abrade. means they won't have an Abrade for later things that I play. Yeah, that's fine. Well, that was an excellent draw. Coward. I didn't. I didn't play like a coward. Kind of. Well, I. I. I, I think I played like a like an intelligent coward. I could have tried to block during combat. The same exact thing would have happened. The result would have been exactly the same. But this way, they didn't have the option of playing like a sorcery speed, anything. Sarkin Fireblood, you got it. Oh, this is why they're playing so many dragons. I see. I see, I see, I see. They're adding mana? Uh-oh. They're adding blue mana? Oh, that's terrifying. Okay, good. It's not for something that's actually blue. Well, that's just tremendous. You're a bold weird intimidator. That's right, I'm a bold weird intimidator. I'm the boldest. All right, if I play Urza, I have three mana available. So I could play Sword of the Meek. If I play Karn and I grab Thopter Foundry, can I win the game the next turn? Not quite. If I play Goblin Engineer and put Sword of the Meek in my graveyard, no, no. If I play Goblin Engineer and I put Thopter Foundry in my graveyard, I can definitely win next turn.
Um, yeah. Not that I will, but I certainly can. Why not Urzen to Engineer? Um, uh, so I want to spend the two mana to drop my Sword of the Meek into play here. At end of turn. They've got to have a pretty weird and pretty specific arrangement of removal spells here. And there's still a Trinisphere in play that's messing with them. Or is Engineer probably just wins? Yeah, probably. Oh, you can turn off the three ball. That's right. Things that I forgot, because that card has weird text. It's okay. They only have two minutes left. It's over. We, we got it. Yeah. We need red mana, but I can get it off of this. Yay! Combo! <laughs> Unless... No, no, there's nothing they can do. There, there's a three ball in play. Got him. Got him! Alright. Um, sack. Pay one. Sack that. Always yield. Yep. Alright. Tap that. Sack it. Tap that. Yay! Well, we haven't used Pyre of Heroes yet, but mid-range Jeskai Urza combo with literally no interaction still does work. MTG Capinas. Jess, it's time for Duma MTG Campinas to play against me. Alright. Um, this hand is very silly. Uh, and I'm on the draw with no gemstone caverns, so we'll just mulligan. This one only has one land. Ah! Okay, our opponent mult to six. We'll go to five. Um, still, I'm playing 23 lands. Jeez Louise. Oh my God. Hey, it's Mr. Maple Syrup. Welcome, welcome. How are things dripping and tripping, maple syrup? Eat the pudding, 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 eat the pudding. Oh no. And then we gotta get to work. Oh no. Okay, I'm naming human instead of artificer because there's a good chance I concede this game before playing any spells. So. So we died. Even Etron is going to beat me on that end. Done for the week with classes and meetings. Nice. Etron, even worse. Uh, it certainly means my chalices aren't very useful, and I can't board into boil. Uh. We do get a small advantage to this game in that they are likely to um, keep their chalices in. But yeah, this is generally going to be a little bit rough. Um, probably I can board out two of these for a Thopter Foundry and a Sword of the Meek. Just hope to quick combo. Um, 
and a damping sphere. Yeah, we already got a spyglass in the main, so I don't need the second one. Aether Sworn is probably better than Chalice. All right. There we go. See, this is what I was talking about. A hand with lands and spells. This guy's gonna make me a hell of a fishing rod. I had a power plant, huh? Well, cast artifact spells or activate the art ability. So if I go Karn next turn, I could also play liquid metal coating. All right. Seems worth doing. Dalakos, crafter of wonders. Uh, doesn't let me equip for free or anything, unfortunately. Which pod is the pod? I see neither birthing nor mortar. Get with the times, Larynx Punchworthy. The new pod is called uh, Pyre of Heroes. Pyre of Heroes. It's a bunch of goblin decks running around right now using it. Uh, they do have Tron next turn, but we can cut them off three of their mana. So, and they won't be able to activate any artifact. So, could be good enough. If they have a Reality Smasher, we're going to get wrecked, but, uh, true. Exactly. Get the Liquid Metal Coating. Cast the Liquid Metal Coating. And we are going to pass the turn. So if they have Smasher, we get wrecked immediately. If they don't have Smasher, we've got a fighting chance. Inventor's Goggle gets you a free equip. See, this, this human being's thinking with portals. Well, that's a pain in the ass. But if they wish with it, I could just attack it down? No, I can't, because I can't equip my sword. Rats. Fight. So do we just go for mutually assured destruction? The answer is no. Um, wait, I can boot up my Sword of the Meek and crack them for four? I don't hate that plan. I think that's funny as flip, is what that is. Sword of the Meek. In attack mode. You counted on many things, opponent, but you didn't count on me attacking with a sword of the meek. What? Impossible! Not quite, but I'm not done with, done with my turn yet. Then I cast Blade Splicer in defense mode. Blade Splicer is a 1-1 one, one for three mana. Ha! Pathetic. But I'm not done. Because Blade Splicer brings with it a 3-3 Golem with first strike. What? Attacking with the Sword of the Meek is a bit of an oxymoron. I don't know if that's true. Is that? I don't know if that's true. Well, I mean, yes. It's, it's a Sword of the Meek, but the Sword defends the Meek. The Sword is, is a protector of the Meek. A champion for the Meek. The sword itself is not a, a demonstrative of weakness. So they can't ballista here. 
They can they can't a lot of things. And then Ugin is largely not particularly useful to kill my board, but would uh put out a theoretically grotesque board. So sword for the meek, some assembly required. <laughs> no, it's definitely a sword of the meek, because like the the trigger the trigger is based on the creature being a one one. The sword the sword launches itself from the graveyard into battle to help the meek so it is a sword of the meek but it, it is not in and of itself a meek sword dear opponent what uh what are you doing over there do you have a plan i don't care if you do or don't i just I just want to see what you're going to do. I want a meek sword for the meek. Got it. A meek sword for the 20, for a meek man in 2021. Like one of those like little thin, you know, crappy swords that the French people use. I want a sword of the awoke that comes back into play when it, no, no, 2020. Merit Lage is the awoken horror, right? I mean, no, a 7-8 is the Awoken Horror. Fencing Ace. <laughs> swole. Oh, sort of the Swole. All right, they're, they're wishing. Oh, this is going to be Sundering Titan. For sure. Sky Sovereign. What are they going to do? Punch my Karn? Oh, they have a second fucking Karn. Brutal. Sundare Titan. Sky Sovereign is 76. Well, it's going to punch something on my board and remove it. And then I will probably not be able to kill their Karn. Uh, they can also use their Karn to boot up their Sky Sovereign as a blocker. But we'll see how clever they are. Yeah, so they take down my Golem. If they boot up their Sky Sovereign as a blocker, this is the worst case scenario for us. Hey, look, they booted up their Sky Sovereign as a blocker. This is the darkest timeline. Yeah, it's not it's not great. It's not going not going great for the home team, I'll tell you that much. Um so I can shock this hollow fountain three, four, five, six. That doesn't really help me. I guess I could just get a worm coil. But like them having all this mana next turn is just so freaking bad for us. Even though I boot up Sword of the Meek, play another Karn, boot up the Liquid Metal Coating, and attack with both. Um, bridge. Bri I mean, yeah. Uh, we could get a bridge. I just don't really know what my plan is after that, but I, I guess I don't really need to have one. Mycosynth is banned, yes. Yeah, Br Bridge and Engineer is the plan here. And then I guess we um, bury a um, Icker Wellspring and we start grinding cards and see where we can go from there. Bridge. Uh, 
play this guy. Ew. Unless there's something better to get here, but I don't think that there is. No, there's not. Play a tap land. And pass the turn. I have a feeling we're gonna get Sundering Tightened, but that's actually not too bad. We'll have three mana plus two extra for artifacts and enchantments. But I I don't know. I feel like they're gonna find an easy out. We'll see. Rip. You don't think they're playing Titans anymore? They're playing Titan. They're playing Sundering Titan in their sideboard. They they really should be. Especially with some of the Tybalt's trickery. Usually it's just Boat Guy, Worm Coil. Uh, sometimes there's a Walking Ballista, and, you, and recently there's almost always been a Sundering Titan. Sometimes there's even a Batter Skull. Yes, yeah, opponent says, You fooled me with that resignation. I was sure it was a human's deck. I thought you might. I got him. I got him with my bluff. All is dust. Yikes. That's That's big big game. <laughs> There's the batter skull. <laughs> They're Karn for something. Probably Tormod's Crypt? Centering Titan. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't do anything with any of this. I mean, the Centering Titan is not going to kill me, but. Oh, now I don't have a Karn in play? I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, they'll be able to get Lick of Metal Coating? No, but that won't matter either, because I can just play my Karn. Oh, but they're going to Titan me. Ah, uh, I don't think it mattered anyway. I don't think we were winning this game at all. I uh, I got one Karn off the battlefield, but the second one just... Uh... Plussing on Batter Skull is nice. I mean, it's fine, but they have so much mana, they will they could just reset it. I mean, I had a Karn in play, so... But uh, there's also a bridge in play. So, I mean, so the, the only thing they need to do is eventually find a way through my bridge, which they will. Well, they're not always playing seven mana card in Etron. E Etron is, and even if they are, they're they're oftentimes playing exactly one. So, because like all is dust is sometimes their replacement for that. They're not always playing. Um, they're not always playing multiple copies of all is dust. Sometimes they're playing one or two. 
Um, sometimes they're playing no copies of, of Big Karn. Sometimes they're playing one or two of those. Echon e has a lot of customizability. They're not always playing the Batter Skull in any number in the whole 75. I I cannot imagine playing uh, registering Etron in this in this meta game with all the Tibble's trickery decks, but maybe they maybe they have a plan. They could have a spine of Ishsa right now, but if they did, I think they would have gotten it already. Chooses Walking Ballista, sure. They can play it for like six, four. Five, yeah, you're six. Oh, maybe seven? Seven. Seven. Miscounted. Sure. Okay, let, let me just check really quickly if I do have literally any way to beat their Karn. No. No, I don't. All right. Psy plus Urza? Uh, I, uh, yeah, technically, but I I haven't drawn either of them by now. There's exactly one Psy in my deck. I I don't. I'm not. I'm not going to bother. Oh, no, it's all good, Horny Vegan. I mean, there's a, there's a few... There's definitely a few things to look at in terms of the deck building. Um, this isn't the gameplay... The game to play, I understand. Oh, no, I mean, that's... Yeah, exactly. I mean, is it theoretically possible we win there? Sure. Could I show the list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh... It should be... should be right here, as it usually is. Yep. Um, I did make one change, Horny Vegan. I got a, um... I got an Aether Sworn Canonist into the sideboard and one into the main. Um... I, uh, just because I wanted to have some game against the, um, Tibble's Trickery decks, and now we know that this deck has no answer to, uh, to Karn, the great creator, so we need to have that somewhere in some form or fashion. I mean, technically we have a Psy, but, like, the only way we can get to Psy is with Pyre of Heroes, which doesn't work against the Karn, so, like... Yeah, it's kind of crappy. But all the, the Urza decks as as a unit have a really hard time with Karn the Great Creator. So um, it could be the case that the sideboard boils would be better served as ceremonious rejections. It could be the case... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Not only is it an artifact hoser, though, it's just like a generally strong main deckable card. That is what we needed in a snow hoser. In terms of what people wanted to see. Which I would have had no problem with. If they if they had something on the level of Karn the Great Creator, but Hoses Snow, I would have been uh, more than happy with that. Electric Bob. Can I keep this? Yeah, we've got turn one... Uh, turn one... Uh, Chalice of the Void. We're going to spook our opponent by looking like the uh, nonsense deck. Then they're going to be playing the nonsense deck and just kill us on turn one. What's up, Teeth? Mm, unlikely. It's no longer likely that they're playing the nonsense garbage deck. Hierarch, sure. Oh, I should have exiled this. For some reason, my brain forgot that that's a tap land. Well. Maybe there's something that wants to play more one drops. Okay, they probably have Spell Queller here. Um, it's 
So I'll play Blade Splicer, I guess. Like we can't we can't not play into the spell queller. Yeah, spell queller. Oh these are not good matchups for us usually. I mean <clears throat> hopefully we'll be turning off their path to exiles and such. But te tempo decks should eat us alive. Um, but we'll see. Maybe we get lucky with uh, Dalakos and Karn. Also, I don't know if you caught the start of the... Good lord. Uh, I don't know if you caught the uh, start of the stream, Horny Vegan, but I think Chalice might be even worse position than it was before the new set came out. Yeah, Karn being able to wish back artifacts that you exiled with your gemstone caverns is, is super neat. That is definitely, definitely true. All right, if we draw land, we could go Karn into bridge here. Uh, and we're theoretically not dead yet. We need them not to have a counter for it, but... Uh, telling me there's a shot. I, I like Chalice. I like Chalice decks a lot. I find them very, very fun to play. And like you just sort of like roll your stuff at your opponent and hope that it's good enough and that's that's frequently very fun but uh but i think just the way the metagame is going to be shook out right now it's like the 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 aggressive decks don't lose to chalice and then the control decks really really will never care um so it's it's just a bad spot to be a chalice deck right now and the way our deck is set up, we just don't have a sideboard plan. I had turn one Chalice here, just totally irrelevant. Like they maybe they have one or two spells in their hand, but it's not even going to matter because their their clock is too fast. Uh, I guess I could draw a card here and see what I pick up. I can't think of anything that will help me here. They're also killing us on turn five with disruption, though. So like they had a ridiculous curve. So I could get an Urza, and then I would have two mana, and then hmm. I'd have three mana if I play my Chalice on zero. Instant speed Skyclave Apparition. Brutality. Alright. Uh, I don't think it's a boil kind of matchup. And we definitely don't need another gemstone caverns. This is just generally going to be a really, really rough matchup. Our clunky deck is not agile to beat spirits, and we have no removal. On the plus side, turn two Stoneforge Mystic is one of the ways we can do this. So we have Sword and Thopter Foundry. Unfortunately, since the release of Skyclave Apparition, yeah, Skyclave is amazing. It's really 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 good it's 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 good on a level that's just truly I, I cannot be expressed i mean it's just there are so many decks now that i've seen where it used to be in game one they would be cold to a good good number of things in the format blood moons and snaring bridges just you know a lot of these cards even post board they didn't always have a, a great plan and now they're just like, lol, Skyclave. And it's not even limited to cards that hose them. Like, Urza eats it to Skyclave Apparition. It's like, so brutal. Sure. Luckily, Batterskull is semi-immune to um, Skyclave, so... 
we got something going for us this game. But if they have uh if they have the perfect curve out to uh if they have the perfect curve out to uh collected company, that will be bad. Who's in the driver's seat now, spirits? Who's in the driver's seat now? Collected company hit Lord Lord block. Just taking it? And why didn't you attack? What you do you know over there? Alright, uh I guess I'll play Goblin Engineer uncounterably. Although, why I would give them something for them to grab for free with their spell queller. I mean, I guess spell queller is theoretically like less damaging than some of the other things they could play. Like, they could play two two mana spirits into a lord. But if they have a spell queller, they're going to want to spell quell this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know I don't know where you're quoting that from Mr. Maple Syrup that is in my favorite TV show of all time in, in a certain form uh, in Clone High there's an episode where, where everyone in the van hops into the back of the van and they're like wait a minute who's driving the van and then you see the, it zooms out and you see the van make like a left turn and just no problem apparently no one was driving it no problem This is the one sword of the meek in my main deck. So if they have a uh, Skyclave Apparition, it's going to kind of suck. But, um, yeah. Clone High is an absolute jam. You must be Canadian then. Or you probably live in the Northeast, but uh, Clone High is an absolute jam. I agree. So much of the cast of Scrubs, uh, so many random SNL people, it's a, uh, it's a crazy thing that that happened. That allowed that show to get made. Delicos, crafter of wonders. Oh no, another spell queller. All right. Okay. I can always equip my Sword of the Meek onto my Batter Skull next turn. Just really hoping they don't find Skyclave, because... Okay, so they're, they're prepared for that eventuality. Well, you got to be on the northeast, the northwest, or the I don't know mid north. Uh, if if you've if you've lived on both sides, is usually I mean unless you're one of those people who's moved like two thousand miles. Okay. Um, so they need to let a spell queller die if they want to beat my batter skull in combat. And. They don't know I don't have a land in hand, so I could have the ability to reset the batter skull right now, and they don't know it. I think we just attack and see what they throw at it. Probably they go block, block. And then we get, uh-oh. Okay.
This is Drog Skull Captain. Yep. Okie dokie. Block with Wanderer and yeah, that sucks. Uh Keep in mind, everyone, our opponent has four lands in play and a creature and two cards in hand still. Just no fucks given. On the flip side, uh, stop your foundry. Woohoo! Scoops. Immediate scoop. That's, uh, that's crazy. You do know you're playing Skyclave Apparition, right? You know you can break my combo up? I'm not sure what just happened there, but I'm okay with it. This makes me think that I want my fourth Thopter Foundry and my second Sword of the Meek in the main deck and just board out some Chalices, because they're just really poor here. Especially on the, on the draw. All right. Clone High is what taught me that uh, Will Forte is one of my favorite people on the planet. Nicole Sullivan, also A+. Never does not have the Hierarch on a seven card hand, huh? All right. I mean, you you don't think it'd be this way, but it do. It do. Sure. Supreme Phantom. My abs are so firm, you can grate cheese on them. That's the, that's the quote. And on Fridays, I do abs and calves, but not lats. As you recall, I no hold on, abs, abs and legs, but not calves. Yeah, as you recall, I do those with my lats on Wednesdays. Didn't find out about Will Fourteen for the last man on earth. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, th thanks to Clone High, that was like the really the only thing that switched me on to him. And then eventually, I uh, have watched some uh, SNL from the. From the 90s and, and uh, 2000s, and uh, he's just A+. Plus. Coderific, thank you for the follow, friend. Hope everything is good for you, wherever you are in this crazy world right now. Alright, well, here's my blade splicer. Goddamn splicers. 3-3 um, three, three first strike definitely can mess up the Skyclave apparition, so... <laughs> That's no way to treat a member of the team! Especially one whose skin is still silky smooth. <laughs> I mean, whose moves on the court are as smooth as the <laughs> skin is silky. I mean, thighs are milky. <laughs> I gotta go. I I I love his gay dads too. Mm, look how nice he looks in the dockers we bought him. Gay dad, enough fawning. The gay dads are just the best. You ever seen that TV show, My Two Dads? It's like that, but more gay. <laughs> oh, what what a program. Good God. All right, human on this one, sure. Uh, I think I'm playing Urza. Could play Karn. Karn for bridge next turn really doesn't get me anywhere. 
Urza theoretically gives me a lot of mana. They have Skyclave I get messed up. I could go Karn for, like, Tormod's Crypt just to put, like, a zero drop in to play Guaranteed. And that means Urza next turn has two extra mana, which plays the Icker Wellspring. I kind of like that one. I guess the question is, like, how, how scared am I playing here? They've already played one Skyclave, so let's just assume we can... Well, no, there's, like, almost no value in playing uh, Urza this turn, so I'll play Karn. Should soak some damage. And then I think I'm going to get a Tormod's Crypt. Just to sit and play as a zero mana artifact that will be a Mox Sapphire. I guess the downside of this is if they just attack down my Karn and then play nothing. But I think I'll take it. Snaring Bridge to threaten them. Well, I don't know if it threatens them, though. And it doesn't, that doesn't guarantee me any value next turn. And even if I cast it, they know I have so many cards in my hand. So. Because I, I have a second card, which they don't know. And um, obviously this is like a weird play, but. Mox Sapphire it is. Well, not yet, right? <laughs> not even a Mox Sapphire yet. It's a Darksteel Relic for the moment. Except it's not indestructible. Um, okay. Yeah, so they played nothing here, unfortunately, which means they could easily have a uh, spell queller. So I don't necessarily just want to jam Urza into this, but Psy, Psy messes with them pretty good if it resolves. I shouldn't have played the land first, but uh, this is almost as must counter as Urza for them. Uh oh. Well, now I'm afraid. Oh, I should have attacked for two there. My bad. So we could have them at 15. I guess they had nothing. They must have a collected company or two in hand, which is terrifying. Oh, sorcery speed, Skyclave. Oh, no, we've been in danger for a minute. But this is eating this, which means I get to resolve the Urza next turn, which is exactly what I wanted. This doesn't have flying, so it's not super dangerous. Take my take my sigh. Do it, do it now. Yeah, cool. I mean this is this is kind of exactly how I was trying to play here. Like this is the play I was looking to have happen, so. So in a way, everything's coming up Millhouse. Boarded in the Gruel Charm. You wish. And so do I. Spring. See if we can top deck a two mana artifact. Ding. Shoot. I could have tapped in a way where I could play that, but I didn't. Um, however, I think next turn we can go infinite in theory. So as long as we're not dead. Weathered runestone. Oh! That's a thought. What is the actual factual text on that card? I did not bother to read it properly. Card. Weathered runestone. Runestone! Right, so, two mana artifact. Non-land permanents and graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. Oh, for the love of... <sighs> Are you kidding me? Oh, man. God, that's such a kick in the teeth. Triclave Apparition. Yep. 
If I had the Urza, we would be like, maybe okay here. It's possible we can get to this bridge, especially if I draw an untapped land. Bang. I can't believe it's not Butter Skull. Um, yeah, yeah. Batter Skull is probably one of the best things we can draw or just play. Because then we'll have Construct and Batter Skull and Illusion to block their ground creatures. Um, one Lord will not kill us. And then the Batter Skull will help us stay alive. On the flip side, I could play Stoneforge and Goblin Engineer and set up for... Uh, Thopter Sword next turn. I mean, if they have Collected Company, we're probably hosed no matter what. Yeah, B Butter Skull is probably the place to be. All right. Can't be Skyclaved. If, uh, if Horny Vegan is here... Um... What? 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 Oh, that's just great. Good lord. Freaking force of negation. I, it's probably for uh, for the Tybalt's Trickery decks. I can't believe they kept it in, considering what I've played in the previous games. Although, maybe? No. I have so many ways to cheat my shit into play. Brutal. Well, I mean, we could stay alive here. I don't know how I can draw out of this. Fuck, man. Force of negation. Gross. I guess Thopter Foundry would have put us pretty close there. Would Thopter Foundry have done it? Yeah, I think it would have. Oh, well. Force of negation in spirits. In Bant spirits with multiple white cards and green cards. I mean, I'm sure their I'm sure their blue count is high enough. That's just like that's such a tilt, man. That's that was that was not okay. Oh, I mean, it's fine. It, it, it makes sense. I get it. Keeping up with the times, yeah. I don't think Weathered Runestone works against Tybalt's Trickery, by the way. It puts the cards into Exile. Same with Brink Delight. Same with Cascade. Oh, it, we've already played this person. Uh, gross. Oh, I want uh, I want this button. They were round two. They're on uh, Etron. We're on the play here. Turn three, Karn. I mean, I have Thopter Foundry. Why not? All right. Well, like, that card is clearly not supposed to do the thing that you... I think that you think that it's supposed to do, right? Jeez. We're even going to miss our land drop, too, right? Okay, we got it. Thank goodness. 
Of course, it depends on how good their payoff is. So let's find out. Yep. Oh, you need the card in front of it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Japired. I love that. That's great. Smasher. Yep. Maze Mind Tome. Sure. So we go um, Foundry into Sword. Sorry, Foundry into uh, Damping Sphere. Hope they don't have a Karn and hope they don't have a... Um... Trying to remember. They, they have a way to remove this, right? I'm trying to think if they do. They must. I mean, we're almost definitely just hosed again, but if they don't find a Karn relatively quickly, maybe Sword of the Meat can pull us through here. Thopter Foundry. Just done. Just dead. Got it. Got it. I mean, that's each run, right? At least they're not chalicing us for any value, but uh, we just don't, we, we weren't ready for this matchup at all. I, I did not, I did not think anyone in their craziest dreams would be playing this deck. Um, interesting to note, not only have we not activated Pyre of Heroes yet, but we've only even had the opportunity to do it about once. So, I... I'm about as medium on this card as I think I would have been. Artificer Tribal was by far the most appealing. This is the same opponent as round two. So they must have started a new league. Oh, I should have done the thing I did last time where I boarded out three of my, uh, three of my chalices. Well, maybe we'll steal a game here somehow. Guess the artificer count is kind of low i mean it's not even about that either right we only have two pyres and one of the ways to get it is with goblin engineer which is very circuitous like that no this hand isn't bad i mean the chalice is basically a blank piece of cardboard so did they keep seven every time and they do this I think one time they didn't have um, the the Tron. They ended up with two Tron lands and a temple. But, like, good lord. There it is again. Every, every time. Uh, all right. Oh, no, no, no. I just took myself off the Goblin Engineer because I was tilted by the... That stuff. All right. So they're going to have uh, Karn next turn and just eat me alive again, I guess. Not that the Engineer really would have helped. Because, like, um, if we get Sorcerer's Spyglass and Karn, it turns off our Karns. Also, their Karn just sits in play, turning off our artifacts anyway. So not, not so good. Reshaper. Okay, this is one of the crappy... Crappy hands from them, but if they also have thought not, okay. No thought not. That's so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, same opponent though. Same opponent. So it's one Eldrazi player who's just out here in the queues slugging it out for no. No discernible reason to me.
Because as far as I can think, Eldrazi has basically no game against any Tybalt's Trickery deck. Again, unless they can get a Chalice on two. But that costs four mana. That's, uh... That's slow going. Blast Zone. That's a yikes. Karn. Okay. So now I'm going to have to find Karn to, um... Now I have to find Karn to wish for a Sword of the Meek, unfortunately, because I didn't board in the second one. The only one in their 1-4? Maybe. Could be. Yep. Freaking dismember. Yikes. Well, it's a good top deck, I guess. Um, attack with my batter skull, because maybe we get to draw a card. And we have enough mana right now to reset the skull, so... It's not a bad way to spend our turn if that's what ends up happening. Oh, right, matter reshaper for the free draw. Puts hers as mine. Not good. Oh, that now they can crank their blast zone. Awesome. Awesome. Just totally sacked myself. Um, that's tremendous. I would like to be done. I would like to be done. Can I just can can you just draw a Karn, please? So I can leave. This is I don't like this. Tron math is good math. One plus one plus one equals seven. Destroys all two draw. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done there. I, I don't want to play that anymore. I don't care. I just don't care. I'm not winning that. All right. We had... Two mildly fun matches that were reasonable, and then two matches against the same Edron player that just absolutely crushed us. I think all four games they kept seven, and three of them they had turn three Tron. <laughs> that's uh that's tough. That's tough to beat. I don't know if this deck should be playing Karn. And I don't like... I don't think I like all the Goblin Engineer targets in here. Maybe they're okay.
Yeah, I can't keep that in the dark. We're, we're playing 23 lands, and we keep ending up with these hands, too. So we've definitely also have a rough run of luck. Lotus Bloom is the truth with Engineer. I could get behind that. I mean, I don't like it, but I could get behind the fact that that's something worth doing. I guess with a second land, this hand is really good. So, I mean, in the dark, I'll keep it, and we'll, I'll, we'll end up scooping game one again when we don't hit a second land in two draws. Lotus. Yeah. Lotus could be good. Okay, we've already missed one draw. Come on. Come on, little dick. Come on. Okay, opponent might have missed their second line draw. They did not. Come on. There we go. Was that so hard? All right. Um so because I already have one of my pieces of equipment in my hand, these two Stoneforge Mystics are redundant. Somehow we've also had this happen a lot. We have one Batter Skull, one Sword of the Meek, and two Stoneforge Mystics, and we consistently end up in games where our Stoneforge Mystic fizzles. I We have had a really rough go of things. Gen Cascade. Blood Moon. Interesting. Yeah, this is probably Jund Cascade, and they're just playing Blood Moon because they can. What's going on over there, opponent? What are you... Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Just dead. Guess you named Tibble. No, no, no. We, we named Scoot. The only way I could conceivably keep playing this game is if I literally top deck the planes. And uh, there's there's one. One in the whole deck. Or I guess no, no. If we if we hit one of our talismans, it would have been too slow. That was just like really, truly, tremendously awful luck again. And uh and we, we we just can't, you know, you can't beat that, and that's fine. We get uh, some reasonable sideboard cards, though, instead of Chalice. So. I think one of the other flaws with this deck is the fact that you put in two Pyro of Heroes to help you find four Urzas. Um, for your combo deck. And that... That feels silly. I don't know. Do you feel me? Is that Does that make sense? I played Trickery for two whole leagues last night. Uh, they are going up on YouTube in two hours and 20 minutes. All in one video, because it was both leagues were pretty quick. As you might expect. Another downside with this deck is that we don't have like any zero mana artifacts whatsoever. So I'll get into it after this match, but I, I have notes. I have notes. Pyre's probably bad. Well, it's not, but it's not about Pyre being bad. It's about we didn't even get to test it at all because of some of the things that this deck was built with. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. Do I want a Trinisphere here? I think I do with what my hand is. This is, I mean, this is freaky ideal. If we somehow get away with this game, I mean, they could just have a, a Bone Crusher here and we get wrecked. I really hope not. I mean, I just said it, so of course. Yeah. But uh, if that had not happened, we would have been in a pretty okay spot. This is, okay, again, like, I like this against some of the Trickery decks, but not this one. I mean, I, I think I have to play it this turn. And that does give me a bridge to get to Karn. So maybe that'll work out. So now they can't Violent uh, Outburst this turn for any value. 
I did not fetch this game. I just haven't drawn any fetches. So the mana base here is a little sp speculative as well. Can't beat that. Oh, I missequenced my lands. I don't know why I always do this. I always, I, no, not always. Just things were going badly for me and I started being stupid. I, uh, I kept all fast lands in my hand. I could have played one last turn and I didn't. Uh... Have you considered being less stupid? I have. Um, I never go for it for whatever reason, but, uh, I mean, this is not as death as it right on time. This is not as death as it should be here. It's really fucking bad, but maybe we can get a worm coil in play. Yeah, just just dead. Yeah, just done. Okay. I had Goblin Engineer into Transphere, got foiled. Aethersworn Canonist, foiled. Alright, so 1-4. We got our one win at the beginning, and then it was all downhill from there. Uh this deck is not well set up for, for the metagame right now. Um uh, it's also, in my opinion, not set up well for Pyre of Heroes. So let's see what I would do. So get those out of here. Get one of these Gemstone Caverns out of here. I don't like playing two in this deck when you're not really going to be able to go all in on it that way. Transfer can live in the sideboard. I don't think I need one main deck. Um, I don't... I don't hate the Karns. But let's see what other changes we're going to make. Uh, I definitely want less than four Urzas. Because Pyre is supposed to stand in supposed to stand in for an Urza. So if we're going to have Pyre stand in for an Urza, then we shouldn't be playing four Urzas because they're expensive and clunky. We had multiple games where we drew like two Karns and one Urza or two Urzas and a Karn and had a hard time getting them out. Um... So let's get a third pyre of heroes in this deck at least. And then I want Mishra's Bobble and Emery, I think. Some number of EE. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, Dalakos is... Probably hunt nonsense. I know Emery is not um, an artificer, and she's not a human, so Emery into Urza doesn't work. But um, we could get a Vencer. I'm sure there's some good four drop wizards. I, I did do the search at some point. Um,
Maybe we don't need to play Emery, but I definitely think that this is a lot closer to a playable deck to start with. Maybe a second sigh would be good. Or a very different way to go with this would be to get some copies of um, Sahili. Sublime Artificer. She's super fun with Psy and super fun with uh, Emery. Now you have more than enough artifacts for the Goblin Engineer for sure. And Urza. Um, maybe we get Dalakos back in here. But um, with Dalakos, um, where your equipped creatures get flying, we could get Sword of Fire, Sword of Fire Nice in here. For the uh, Stoneforges. Now I feel like we're cooking with propane. Even go, I don't, yeah, let's go down to one Urza. We've got three Pyre of Heroes. We've got a little chain of Artificers. Get another Stoneforge. I guess three Stoneforge. Yeah. And we could could be playing some one mana artifacts, I'm not sure which ones. So this this is closer to where I'd start with this. I don't really know how good this is. We probably don't need two blade splicers. So our artificer chain is Psy, Blade Splicer, and Dalakos. Um, we've got some Emery's. Looks cool. Well, thank you, Horny Vegan. I, I do my best. So I think this is uh, this is what you should try with this deck. Um, if if there comes a time where Chalice of the Void is once again playable, the way you n built it initially or closer to that is probably something you could do. Um, there is also, hold on, I, I know, I think there's one more, like, reasonably playable uh, Artificer. It's uh, it's the one with Improvise, Maverick Thopterist. It's like, creature, Artificer. I guess the problem with it is uh, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't pod into anything. It's just like a five drop that has improvise and uh... yeah, Maverick Thopters. It gives you two Thopters. Probably not worth playing. But there was an infinite combo with this card and um, Inventor's Goggles in standard. Which was pretty wild with some of the uh, modules from Kaladesh. Um, so, anywho, that was Meanwhile. a uh, pretty rough run 